morning, guys. Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School. You know, one thing that the woodsmen of the past, going back all the way to Daniel Boone, Simon Kenton, up to Nesmick and Horace Kephart, one thing that they all had in common was they were very good navigators. Being a good navigator is an essential tool for any explorer, tramper, trucker, woodsman of today. And we have very complicated devices that we can use today to help us in our navigational needs. We have very expensive compasses and complicated type compasses that have movable bezel rings on them, base plates that can be put on a map to get bearings off of a map and plan our routes and things of that nature. We have GPS's that are electronic devices that will give us exact directions and distances between waypoints and all those types of things. In the earlier days, the days of Horace Kephart, the days of Nesmick, the days of Daniel Boone and Simon Kenton, they weren't so lucky. So they had to figure out ways to navigate with compasses that really only gave you a general direction. North, south, east, west, or combinations of those four. But they used techniques that we teach in the Pathfinder School to navigate so that they could use them in conjunction with a compass that gave them a general direction so that they wouldn't get lost. And those techniques are what I want to talk about today. And there's five techniques that you can use to navigate through the woods if you have a compass and sometimes if you don't have a compass like we talked about terrain association in one of our videos you can use these techniques along with terrain association to give you a very good navigable route even if you only know the general direction maybe you don't have a compass but you still have the sun the moon the stars the trees things to primitively navigate and those five items are handrails backstops, aiming off, baselines, and blazing. We're going to talk about those five techniques of navigation today because they've been used throughout time. And again, some of the things that have been forgotten that I think we should revisit to help us in our navigational techniques in the present day of trekking and scouting. Okay, so again, real quick, just to go over those five methods of navigation. Handrails, backstops, baselines, aiming off, and blazing. These are very simple techniques that I'm going to explain to you today and give you a very good understanding of what they mean. Some of them can be used in combination with each other and some of them are actually interchangeable depending on your position in reference to the handrail or the backstop or the baseline. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. We're going to look at a map. We're going to talk about those things on a map. And then we're going to go into the field and look at those things in the field. So that you get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Okay, so using this map of an area around the Pathfinder School, let's discuss these five traveling techniques for navigation. And first we'll talk about handrails. Handrails are prominent features that I can use to keep me from straying off course and get me where I'm going. And there are several things on this map we could use for handrails. Let's first talk about this pipeline as a handrail. Let's say that we are traveling from the base of this creek down here. There's a large beaver pond here. And we want to travel up to this wetland area. Well, it's very simple. If we follow this pipeline all the way up, we don't have to get out onto the pipeline, but if we follow this pipeline all the way up, or we cross it and hug it on this side, we're going to get where we're going. That is a handrail. In retrospect, we can use a handrail the other direction. If we're traveling from this township road across this trail, that trail becomes a handrail for us. If we don't want to stay on the trail and we want to explore out in here, as long as we keep that trail in sight, it becomes a handrail for us. We can also use ridge lines and things like that for handrails. You can see that there's a large open area here where this creek runs through, and a creek makes a very, very good handrail. And on both sides of that are high ridges. So as long as we stay in the downhill portion along this creek, we can use this creek for a handrail, even if this pipeline wasn't here, to get to this wetland area. Those are how you use handrails. Backstops. Backstops are used very similar to handrails, except they are used as points of telling you you've gone too far. So in this case, let's use the pipeline as an example again and say that we're traveling this creek is going to be our handrail. We're trying to get to this wetland area. We follow this creek up. If we get to this trail that crosses that pipeline, 
we know we've gone too far. That becomes a backstop for us, okay? We missed somehow. We've laterally drifted this direction or this direction, and we've missed our target. But we hit this trail, and that becomes our backstop. Now we need to turn around and go back. Baselines. Baselines are used from camp in linear directions to help you combat lateral drift or compensate for lateral drift and find your way back. So let's say that our baseline in this case, let's say we have a camp on this hilltop. And we're going to use this old township road, and there's not much left of it, you'll see when we get out there. We're going to use this old township road as our baseline. Now, if I know that my lateral drift takes me left, then I'm not going to baseline south because if I drift left, I could still come back and overshoot and not know exactly what direction to go back to my camp. And that's the purpose of a baseline. I want to know what direction I have to turn when I hit this, which becomes my backstop at that point. I want to know when I hit this baseline, coming back from my exploration, which way to turn to get to my camp. So if I know that my lateral drift is always going to be left, I'm going to turn north on this road. I'm going to walk up this road a ways, maybe to this trail and use it for a chair rail or a handrail, maybe not. Say I walk up into here and I start to explore. Now I walk through here, lateral, lateral drift is going to take me left. I'm always going to be going left. I'm not going to go right. Maybe I use this trail right here for a handrail to tell me, okay, or a backstop again to tell me, okay, I'm going too far. I don't want to go in there, turn back here. And when I go back to my camp, I know that when I hit this baseline, I can only turn one way, south, and that's going to lead me back to camp. And that is the purpose of a baseline, is to tell me what direction I need to go coming back to camp. It's used very similarly to aiming off, which we're going to talk about next. Okay, guys, this large clear-cut pipeline out here gives us a very good example of three of the things that we talked about. We talked about handrails, and if we were traveling in a north-south direction here, we could use this pipeline as a chair rail, if you remember, or as a handrail. If you remember right on our map, it runs almost the entire length back here. So we can bounce back and forth side to side, and as long as we keep this handrail in our, in our sights, we're not going to get lost because we know that we can follow it right back to where we came from or take it right to where we want to go if we're looking for that wetland area. At the same time, if we're traveling in a more east-west type direction through here, we can use this for a backstop as of I went too far, especially if I'm coming in from the back side of the wetland area. If I'm coming in from the back side over on the other side that we'll go to in a minute from the hilltops over there, if I'm coming in that direction, I hit that pipeline, I know I've passed that area. So that's my that's basically my backstop. Okay, so let's discuss aiming off for a moment. Aiming off can be used with a compass. I can take a bearing on purpose that is left or right of my object, knowing that when I hit a target area, I'm going to turn to the left or the right. So let's say that I'm traveling from here, and I want to get to this wetland area to set up a camp along this creek bed. So as I travel from this old township road, what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim off on purpose. So I'm going to travel in a north, in a northerly direction here, northeast direction, and my aim off point is this trail, this trail junction with the pipeline, because I know when I hit that point, I can only turn one way and that's south to get to this wetland area and follow this creek bed down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, I'm going to look at my map and say, okay, I know northeast of me there's a trail junction. So now as I travel, maybe I come through here going northeast, traveling, 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 oh, there's my handrail. I take my handrail down to this junction right here where the pipeline meets that trail. Okay, that's my aim off position. Now I know I have to go south and I'm going to get to this wetland area. That is a combination of using a handrail with an aiming off technique. If I were using a map and compass with a movable bezel ring and all that fancy stuff, I would just take a bearing on this map with my compass from this location to this location, and that would be called aiming off. Instead of going from here to here and taking a chance on lateral drift making me miss it, I'm going to aim off on purpose to something that's very obvious, like a trail junction, where there's two basic handrails or baselines or backstops that come together, and I'm going to go there and then turn south to get to where I want to go. That's the use of aiming off. 
Now, if I were going to use that for an aiming off situation, we would have to go up and look at a junction up here where a trail comes out of the woods and comes onto this pipeline that is above that wetland area that we discussed. Then if we were aiming off and going to that, we would know as soon as we hit that junction, we have to head south and we'll know by looking at our map that the wetland area should be on our right. So that gives us a way that we can use that for a baseline. We can use it for, I'm sorry, for a backstop or for a handrail. If we were going to use this for a baseline and we were camping out here somewhere, or close to it in the woods over here in the creek area, then what I'd want to do is I'd want to directly go north or south on purpose before I go east-west. That way I know that depending on my lateral drift is going to dictate whether I go north or south to mark that point. Then I'm probably going to blaze a tree right there, start my exploration, and as I laterally drift to the left because I'm left-handed, when I turn around to come back, I'm going to know that when I hit that, I'm going to have to turn back to the left going the other direction to get back to my campsite when I see that blaze I'll know I'm close that's ways that you can combine these tools to your advantage when you're trying to navigate naturally not necessarily using a map of compass and you know we have the bright sun out here today it's very easy to say okay we know the sun rises in the east it sets in the west we know that it travels in a southern arc so we are basically our own shadow stick we know that when we're standing up our shadow is going to face a certain direction. It's going to be in a northerly direction when we're standing up because the sun's traveling in a southern arc. So we need to understand those things and we don't need a bunch of sun compasses and all of that business because we're our own shadow stick. We can look at the sun and know about what time of day it is, whether it's in the zenith or not, and know whether we're facing more south or more east or more west when we're looking at the sun, or more north, northeast or northwest when we're facing away from the sun. It's all very rudimentary stuff that we just have to think about and use our common sense. And then, of course, we can look at the trees because the majority of that foliage is going to grow in a southeasterly direction because it's trying to catch the photosynthesis of that morning sun coming up. So if we look at several trees, the majority of the foliage will be facing a southeast direction in the northern hemisphere. So we can use all of those natural things to help us navigate along with these five techniques. And we're going to go up and look at another area on the other side over here from the hilltop. We'll talk about these techniques again. But I think if you understand these and you understand rudimentary five finding of direction, you will go a long way to not getting lost and not worry so much about that exact bearing on a compass or that GPS that might lose a signal because you're in heavy foliage or heavy tree cover or there's heavy cloud cover and you lost your signal and now you don't know where you're at. If you can terrain associate, use these five techniques and understand general direction finding in primitive methods, you're going to be a lot better off. So let's go over here to the other side, guys. Okay, guys, so this is the trail right here that was on our map here and we know that it runs across here in an east-west direction from the old township road all the way to the pipeline so again this becomes what it becomes a handrail for us now if we were traveling from this other direction it could become a backstop for us if we were traveling from there it could become a baseline so it could be any of those three depending on our direction of travel but if we were using this trail as an aim off point if we had gone to the water over here in the wetland area we could aim off on purpose right to that handrail knowing that if we follow that handrail down to the township road there's only one direction we can turn when we get to that road to get to our camp and that's back to the south and we could blaze right there if we wanted to just to make sure or to signal for somebody else or let them know we could put a blaze on the left hand side of the trail indicating that you turn left right there and a blaze in my mind would be orange tape around the near sapling to that corner Okay guys, so now we are at the Township Road, and you can see there's not much road here. And you're going to get that on maps that you have. It says it's a Township Road, but it's no longer used, no longer maintained. There may be signs on it that say no vehicles beyond this point. All those things are present here. But we can still use this as a prominent feature on our map for everything from a handrail to a backstop to a baseline, depending on our direction of travel and whether we're going to or from. We can also use trail intersections off of this as aim off points. So I hope I've explained some of this to you fairly well. Uh, I'll try to get this series completed as soon as I can. I've got some more things I want to go over in this navigational series with you guys that goes deeper into land nav than just a map and compass. And I think it's important for us to understand the old time techniques so that we're more comfortable and more self-reliant in the woods. I'm Dave Canterbury from the Pathfinder School. Appreciate you joining me out here today. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my business, my friends, affiliates, and sponsors. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Hey, I'm
living good Back in the woods 